Okay, we asked the lady about, about how, again, how the business is going on. And she said, again, after this fire break up, break out, the business was very slow because the fire took a lot of uh, products, destroyed a lot of products. And it affected almost every family in Forok because every family in Forok has one member selling stuff in the bazaar. Uh, I also asked uh, what is the major clientele she receives and she said uh, the local purchasing power is very weak therefore she has most of her business thrive in the summer when the tourists are coming to buy her beads and uh, traditional headwear, traditional handicrafts as you can see there we can see some uh, traditional socks, Pamiri socks so called and uh, the beads and semi precious stones. There's the music corner over there. Okay, here we here we meet a customer, a happy customer who just bought uh, a Pamiri headwear from from the lady. He's very happy to make that purchase. He's going back home to present it to his wife. How did you like it? Oh, it's great. Actually, I want, wanted one without all the glimmer on it, but... But this is like the this. juice of the yeah, you know, Pamiri embroidery. Yeah, you know, it's just luxury. Okay, good. Yeah, but Congratulations. You know, I, I came here this morning and I bought right. two pairs of socks, Pamiri socks. Right. Very nice ones. Right. Okay. Yeah, Have actually, a happy winter yeah. with the socks. You too. Thank you very much. All right, we are continuing the story of a city tour. We are now in the botanical garden of Horok City. Here before you, you have one of the highest botanical gardens in the world. It is uh, set on the elevation of more than 3,000 meters above the sea level. Okay, in the botanical garden, we have many varieties of trees but one of the most popular in Gorna Balashan are the poplar trees the stately poplar trees which re reach up to some uh, 200 meters and are used for construction mat material as construction material in Gorna Balashan we have rare species of plant life here right now we can't see it but as we go further, we can see a lot of plant life, which, is, which makes the botanical garden in Horog one of the favorite spots for the holiday makers, which make it uh, a must to come at the weekends in Horog. Right now we have a team of TV crew visiting botanical garden. Okay guys, we are still continuing from the botanical garden. Right now we are situated at the edge of the botanical garden. This is the vintage point for viewing the city from the aerial point of view. The city of Horog spreads out from this vintage point. And uh, this point at the botanical garden makes the southern edge of the city. Right now we are filming the city as it is lying uh, edgewise. Down, down there you are now right now looking at the penstock of the power plant which supplies electrical power to the complete city. And uh, the road above is leading to the city of Osh in Kyrgyzstan. You can see some of the former factories lying idle after the collapse of the Soviet Union and nobody's working. Actually the city of Horog hosts some 25,000 people. Almost half of the population is unemployed and relies much on the humanitarian aid. But 
since recently people have started on the development path and uh, are not relying that much anyway this is the city of Horog in front of us one of the best aerial spots from where you can film the city right across from us you can see a village which is about to be leveled to home a university of Central Asia which is scheduled to be built through the years 04 to 12 of this century it is going to be a spot where mountainous disciplines are going to be studied Okay guys, we are continuing our story of the city tour still from the botanical garden there are some things we are missing from this aerial view like the river which divides the city of Horog, the river name of Gund a very dynamic river still in summer that river empties into Pyanj river which makes the border of Afghanistan which in turns which in its turn goes into Amudarya river of Central Asia one of the major sources of water for Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan and uh, in effect the lifeline for the cotton fields of the set countries the cotton fields which make the export item for Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan and the river is very vibrant you can hear the sound of the wind which is also very dynamic and from that you can conclude that the nature forces are very close to the livelihoods of the people of Gorna Balakshan. Even still in summer, the river is full and the wind is strong, which at some point can affect the people because many places are mountainous and prone to natural disasters. Like this mountain slope, very dynamic and always on the go the slope is always on the go and people feel feel the fear of natural disaster which can strike at any moment but fortunately it's been uh, ages still since the last one stroke but this is nothing this is a small price to pay for the beautiful nature of Gorna Balakshan Okay, we are making our final stage of the city tour of the city of Horog. We are right now at the central square, which is dominated by the statue of Lenin, still here, still alive. And uh, in the background of Lenin, you can see the city Hukumat building, which is city government building. This is where the mayor sits. Okay, uh, one of the features of the facade is also the uh, uh, couple of uh, swimming pools where the small kids are taking their bath in the summer. But in the winter, unfortunately, where we have severe temperatures below zero, these pools go frozen. <laughs> 